Maggie and Perloff were live on Radio Row in Houston, site of the men's Final Four. The man who will be calling the Final Four in the championship game for Westwood One is Kevin Kugler. He joins us on the set right now. He also does play-by-play -play for the NFL on Fox. Kevin, thanks so much for the time. No, it's a pleasure to see you guys. My once-a-year visit with you <laughs> on the, on Radio Row. You know, it was this time last year when Perloff was trying to feed you iconic lines yeah. uh, for Coach K if he were to win. I think it was... Well, I got Coach I think K's I OK. One. Yeah, I think I had Coach K is OK. Yeah, I got four. Winners. Didn't use it. Four, four winners for you. this. But year. they didn't win because yeah. so I, I mean, I had it at the ready yeah. and I just couldn't use it because unfortunately yeah. he wasn't OK. They didn't yeah. win the game. So. Lucky for you. because yeah. I would have been stuck in your head and you might have said I might have said it. I said, <laughs> I'm leery to hear what you have for me this year <laughs> oh. because it may get lodged in my head because we've got teams I'm not used to calling. So <laughs> I figured as much. That's yeah, why I worked extra owl hard. related puns are always welcome here. <laughs> Who? Did you look at my screen? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm, just, I'm a big dad joke guy. And, uh, I, I love owl-related puns. Let's go. I'm ready for owl of them. Right. Can I just do <laughs> them now? Look, you Let's really do. are. Oh, boy. It's a dad off. Right. Sad dad. Uh, so sad. Well, I mean, this. All right, now I feel stupid because it's so obvious. But uh, after the final basket goes in, the clock goes off. Who won the title? Who, who? There must be an owl in here. It's Florida Atlantic. Oh, I mean, it's just my, the worst. My 11 year old would have won. Oh, that one. every daughter age 13 and under would think that was hilarious. Yeah. And your son age 19 and under would probably think it's funny. <laughs> All right, I'll just give you the other one. All right, what do you got? Uh, they said you couldn't do it. Guess what? You calm. <laughs> so bad. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just... Kevin, you have to like erase your memory, Men in Black oh, style. I, after I've got this. I've got ear uh, AirPods in. I'm just okay. listening to music right now. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is not a warning. The Hurricanes are the champions. Like hurricane warning. I don't See, know. I struggle doing that, that in Houston. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, a problem. Yeah, yeah. After the hurricane See, this in is Houston. Why Kevin's yeah. doing this yeah. in Yeah, yeah uh, I don't think I can do that. Yeah. Uh, Probably yes. get criticism. Well, I'll tell you what. San Diego State was the hardest one. San yes. Diego State, uh, we might be indoors, but it's getting sunny in here. Because San Diego <laughs> State is the champion. Or stay classy. San Diego State is the champion. How about that? Uh, that that's oh. not bad. Yeah. That's not Ron Burgundy reference. Yeah. 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 I mean, you got to hope Florida Atlantic wins and you could do this. <laughs> there's, there's, the there's, 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 a, there's a whole lot of owl related things I could do. That there's not a lot of Aztec related things. You yeah. Know? The Aztec. But, but Kevin, in real and serious, do you feel like you can kind of spread out a little bit more with these teams? Because it's not the Dukes of the North Carolinas, Kansas, Villanova. Like, you can get get a little weird. There's a little more creative license involved yeah. in this. You know, there's only so many ways you can say Duke has won or North Carolina has done it or Kansas is in. I mean, you know, there's no expectations for a Florida Atlantic national champion. There's no book written about that. You can say whatever you want. Nobody cares. <laughs> also, is that your attitude for the weekend? Man, nobody cares. I mean, no. I mean, nobody cares what your call is because there's no precedent yeah. set for it. My attitude for the weekend is, of course, yay basketball. But yeah. the attitude for the weekend is also there's no – nobody goes like, oh, gosh, you used that nine years ago when Duke won. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no there's no you precedent set. You can't plagiarize yourself here. Like, no, this is all you can't. Real. I think there's actually some pressure with Jim Nance's final final four. So his last call, I, I wonder if there's pressure on Jim to make it memorable. He had so many memorable calls this last one. I think it's going to be a bittersweet moment. Uh, a I, long time college fan. I agree. And, you know, for somebody who all of us grew up and Jim Nance was when you turned on the national championship game, that's who you listened yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, that there was no that was who was on the TV for all of our lives, basically. And at the end of this, and I and look, I'm sure there was a part of him that was hoping his alma mater would be here in his yeah. in this city to call a national championship, and obviously that didn't work out because Miami knocked them off, and he was there last week with them. But I, I have to imagine there is going to be some thought that goes into it for him mm -hmm. because you kind of want to go out. You don't want to just go, and they're the national champs. Post game's next, and yeah. leave. I mean, you have to have something to go out on, I would think. Do you think he would get personal and say, I, I thank you for doing this? I mean, thank you for letting me in your home. I think, he, I think he will at some point. I really do, I, and, I, and I hope he does. I mean, this has been – he's been synonymous with three major deals in his professional career, NFL, the Masters, and golf more broadly, and the and the national championship, the NCAA basketball tournament. I, I, I hope he does – go a little personal on this because after decades of it you should be allowed and afforded the opportunity to do so.
Kevin Kugler stopped by our set. He's going to be calling the men's Final Four and Championship game for Westwood One. Also, does the NFL on Fox. Partner is Mark Sanchez. You guys had a lot of fun games this year. You did a lot of Seattle games. We did. And Perloff and I started off the show with this because Seattle could really be an interesting wild card with the draft. They mm -hmm. gave Geno money, but it's not crazy money. $40 million guaranteed for two years. Right. Like, about. Going rate right now for quarterbacks is, like, way higher. So they have the fifth overall pick. Could they go with someone in the draft? Or is Lamar Jackson a even a long shot possibility? Man, wouldn't that be something to see him? Because there's such a core built right now in Seattle. And I think they overachieved to what their expectations were this past season by making the playoffs. We had them in the final week of the year. But there's a really young secondary. There's some good young pieces along both sides of the ball. But they still have some holes to fill. I mean, they're not a finished product by any means. I I'm fascinated to see what they do with this pick if Lamar Jackson somehow showed up out there. Now, are they going to be willing to pay him the money that he wants to command on the market? I, I don't know. They love Geno. They love what he brings to the team. I would be surprised if they go Lamar Jackson. I think they're going to use this fifth overall pick to shore up some key spots on this team and really try to make a run at in the next two or three years. I think there's a certain sense of urgency when your coach is in his 70s to make one more push towards another Super Bowl. And I know Pete Carroll is incredibly energized by the chance to do this one more time. I mean, if you add Lamar Jackson to that team, hypothetically, are they the favorites or right there in, they're right in, in the, the NFC? Mix. Well, I mean, they're, they're certainly the favorites, I would say, I'm looking at that division, and, you know, there's still a little question as to what's going on with San Francisco. I know Brock Purdy, John Lynch said Brock Purdy is the odds-on favorite, at least right now, to be the starting quarterback. But they are going to have a question with the money and the draft pick they spent on Trey Lance. You look at what the rest of that division looks like. Arizona's in a rebuild mode right now. The Rams are clearly in a rebuild mode right now. You... You're the odds-on favorite in the division probably going into the year anyway, even if you don't get Lamar yeah. Jackson. Does Lamar Jackson, in a conference that is now going through a sea change at the quarterback position, is that going to put them among the upper echelon? I think it probably does. You know, last thing on the NFL, Perloff and I sometimes disagree about this all the time about the 49ers and what they should do a quarterback because, yes, on the one hand, like Perloff says, you don't need the highest paid quarterback. You don't need a great quarterback. Look what they did with Brock Purdy. But my point is, on the other hand, you've yes, you've gone to the Super Bowl. You've gone to two NFC championships with Kyle Shanahan. But wouldn't a quarterback put you even more over the top, more of a sure thing? Where do you think San Francisco, like where do they lean, do you think? Well, I mean, they're, they're leaning Purdy right now. And I guess Josh Rosen changed everything we think about about first-round quarterbacks drafted. <laughs> yeah. You can just be, you can get rid of them as quickly as you get them in the, in this era of of the professional football world. So I guess that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference that they've spent that money and that draft pick on Trey Lance. But if you're not sold on Trey Lance, and, and clearly they're not, if they're giving the edge to Brock Purdy right now, then where do you go? Is Brock Purdy the guy? He looked like the guy for a portion of this season, but when he goes in with that moniker I don't know I'm anxious to see what they decide to do it's a fascinating thing because they certainly have the defense that I think will sustain even without D'Amico Ryans who's down here in Houston I think they can sustain with that defense but can they generate enough offense from the quarterback position to be that team in the NFC yeah I mean oh. who who is the team I'll tell you <laughs> who the team yeah. is Florida Atlantic who? Or Temple. Depends. Or temple. <laughs> yeah. which, it could be Temple. Which owl pun you want to go with? Well, I mean, <laughs> you have a lot in your can head. you believe it? I don't know. Oh, a little oh. can you believe it? I thought you were going to go with a UConn. <laughs> oh, see, thank you. <laughs> well, I think you guys settled it here. Oh, 13-year-olds are loving this segment right it now. Was a, it helps our demographic. <laughs> we're trying to go younger. Really, really young. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Have a great call. Final four, two games, the championship game. It's awesome. Thank you. It's good to see you guys. Let's Thanks do for this a little more often. I'm, I'm always available whenever you need me just let me know we've got seahawks puns we've oh, got other I mean, things we there's 32 you. nfl teams that we've done no puns for during this entire this. segment as soon as you get your schedule call us immediately we'll go through and we'll it go through it one game by game i love it i love <laughs> it you know what a seagull that flies over the bay is called what's that a bagel Ooh, that's there we go my daughter all right there there i like go. that i like that she's that's a good joke thank you you guys just want to grab dinner or something yeah, I'll we just, can do I'll that just, I'll just, just exchange puns yeah, facetime just, our kids I'll yeah exactly that'd be good i'll be over here uh kevin thank you so much kevin kugler it's going to be fun. I Can thought, you I believe thought, it could be it? Yeah, I thought Seagull and Seahawk were close enough that it was on. Yeah, anyway, yeah I know. Can when, you believe it's much better than mine? When you have to explain the joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like the Yukon. Oh, I mean, that was the, clever. the owl joke. I mean, everyone knows that every knock-knock joke is owls and who. It's going to be great. Florida Atlantic <laughs> Owls. And owls is the best nickname. Aztecs is really cool. Yeah. 
Hurricanes is really cool, but the Owls, that's awesome. Florida Atlantic Owls, I think they're going to be my team this weekend. All right. Perloff's on the bandwagon. He's on the board. We've got I, a lot more to do. Yeah, yes. I was eyeing a hat today. I'm showing up in it tomorrow. All right. Florida Atlantic go. for life. <laughs> here we go. And you know what? Why not? Perloff is now picking the FAU Owls. we got a lot more to do here from Radio Row in Houston. We get back to it right after this CBS Sports Update with Rich Ackerman.